thank you very much. I just wanted to pick up on um, Mr. McFadden's question there. He referred to point I in the Chequers Declaration, but um, I was wondering about your thoughts on point H, where it says that free movement will be ended, giving the UK back control over how many people enter the country. Is that a commitment, therefore, that there will still be a quota, uh, a, num a number, a total number of people? The government will still have a target number for how many people enter the country? Well, I think that very clearly says that free movement will end, uh, but it says it will give the UK back control that doesn't put a number on it. Um, but I think that's a really important principle, that we will be in control of our own borders. We will be able to determine our own immigration policy. The Prime Minister has been very clear uh, that she wishes to see net immigration reduce. It has been included in successive uh, party manifestos, which have been successful at general elections, and that is something that I stand by. Uh, but just to um, clarify, it very clearly says there, it will give control over how many people enter the country. So there, there must therefore be an upper limit. You, the government will be continuing to set a ceiling on the number of people that come into the country. It doesn't state a number there. And no, of course that it, will be a matter for uh, future immigration policy. Yes. Okay. So just assuming then that a number will be set, um, Will that be based on some sort of points-based system, a quota? Does, is there a, is there a, it, will this be entirely quantitative or will it be qualitative? Will there be a, a set policy based on the type of people and type of skills we want to have coming into the country or will it be purely a, a number? So we have a long tradition of uh, wanting the brightest and the best people to be able to come here. We do not set a limit on the number of students who can come here to study. Uh, but these are all very much matters for the Immigration White Paper, which will be published after we've received the expert evidence from the Migration Advisory Committee, which is reporting in September. Thank you. Um, just moving on to the point about, um, more, or point really more about settled status and dealing with the uh, EU citizens that are already in the country. And I, I wanted to ask you about um, dis resolution. So what do you see as the institutional framework for resolving disputes between the UK and other EU countries around the status of an EU citizen that's based in this country? So the withdrawal agreement uh, makes it explicitly clear that there has to be an independent uh, arbitrating an ability for independent arbitration. Until such time as we have established that, uh, we would hope to be able to use the uh, Chief Inspector of Borders in order to be able to do so. Um, but there will need to be uh, an independent arbitrator in due course, and we'll set out more details. And that independent arbitrator will follow the guidelines of the European Court of Justice? Uh, we'll be setting out details of how they will operate in due course. Okay. Can you envisage any way in which the European Court of Justice's guidelines wouldn't be the de facto uh, framework for this? So there will be, uh, as part of the withdrawal, as part of the no. order, order, the city We're in subcommittee that we agreed to cover that this morning because we weren't quite sure how the votes were going to affect us. Now, um, Minister, I think you were about to answer a question. Now, can you recall what the question was? Uh, so the question was about the individual uh, applicants and independent monitoring authority. Uh, you may have moved into subcommittee. Can I say I clearly left with the elite um, <laughs> interested? Uh, Flattery will get you everywhere. I, right. I was going to say hardcore. and then, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll be really nice and try flattery Fact. as an option. Um, so the withdrawal agreement says that there will be an independent monitoring authority to monitor uh, the government's implementation. That requires primary legislation to set up. So obviously uh, we will have to do that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the EU Commission will continue to monitor the UK, both our implementation, but of course the implementation of the EU27 and how they're treating uh, British citizens who are living in EU member states. Um, 
the withdrawal agreement uh, is obviously uh, incorporated in UK law, meaning that applicants can rely on it directly in front of UK courts to check that the government is correctly implementing their rights. Uh, the independent monitoring authority cannot directly refer matters, but will take account of uh, CJEU uh, law for eight years from March 2019, um, and UK courts may refer issues to CJEU. Thank you very much. Um, Article 152 of the draft withdrawal agreement uh, is what l lays out that there's going to be this independent monitoring authority, the IMA. But I think uh, recently in a meeting between um, the Home Secretary and Guy Verhofstadt, the Home Secretary pointed out that, in fact, the IMA is, of course, not going to be up and running before the 29th of March 2019. And instead, the um, Independent Chief Inspector for Borders and Immigration, the ICIBI, is going to play that role temporarily. Yeah. But um, aren't we really looking at a major risk here um, of, based on everything not being agreed and nothing is agreed until everything is agreed, that you will not have the IMA set up before exit day and therefore you'd be in breach of Article 152 of the Withdrawal Agreement? So I think we are content that the Independent Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration can act in the meantime uh, in this role. Um, even after exit day? Even after exit day, but we're conscious that that's sub-optimal uh, and so obviously, but it does take primary legislation, you'll be conscious that uh, that is not a quick process in this place um, and so we have to have time to set up the independent monitoring authority. But the ICIBI isn't constituted to have the powers and responsibilities that the IMA is supposed to have in the draft withdrawal agreement. So you'd be trying to put a square peg into a round hole. Um, so I think our, uh, our default position is that we wish to grant people settled status. Uh, we've been very clear on that and this is a system that is set up for people to succeed, not to fail. We want to keep those who do not go through uh, the process successfully to an absolute minimum, but the withdrawal agreement says that the independent monitoring authority must be set up from 2021. But the, I mean, the ICIBI really its role is just to carry out inspections, uh, whereas the IMA you'd be looking at conducting inquiries, receiving and dealing with complaints, uh, and crucially bringing uh, legal actions before a UK court or tribunal. The ICIBI is simply not geared up to do any of that. So. How are you going to create? We think that uh, you, it is a role. You'll be in breach of 152, won't you? Well, the withdrawal agreement says that the IMA must be set up by 2021. Uh, in the interim, we think that the Independent Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration can carry out that role. But you will need then to have a radical change in the terms of reference and scope of operations of the ICIBI. Well, we think that it is feasible that they carry out the role in the interim until such time as we can pass primary legislation to put the IMA into uh, law. So is, is work going on then to increase the capacity and capability of the ICIBI? So I think it is fair to say that across uh, the Immigration Directorate we are very focused on the settled status scheme and making sure that we have this as a process that is up and running. As I said, we don't want people to uh, to fail, we want people to succeed, but we're currently in the process of defining the IMA role and of course that will include what changes may have to be made in the interim to the ICIBI. But you'll understand obviously with the, the three million EU citizens living here are very keen to have resolution and clarity on so many of these issues. That's why Giva Hofstadt has written specifically to the Home Secretary on this point. Um, what, you know, won't they be left looking at a cliff edge because there won't be a resolution mechanism in place because the ICBI is simply not capable of carrying out these functions. So could you perhaps offer to um, write to the committee and update us on what I'm, work is exactly happening for the I'm, ICIBI to be ready, willing and able from the 29th of March to take on this role so that we can give assurance to the three million? I'm certainly very happy uh, to provide an update on what uh, work is going on and can do that in writing. Thank you very much.